right, this is part four and this will be the last lecture for chapter 10. Um, like I say, the, um, after the lever systems, the rest of the chapter is a lot of uh, memorization. But um, I hope that I hope that those of you who um, who watched the last lecture, part three, will forgive me because um, I made a mistake, and I made a mistake because of the picture. Um, I learned third class levers work like this, F E L. And I th I was trying to, um, or well, uh, sorry, sorry. It it's actually the load on this end. It it could be F E L or it could be L E F, but the way that this one is designed, you've got load, fulcrum, and then effort. Okay, so um, I mean load, effort, and fulcrum. So load, effort, fulcrum. So where is the effort actually being applied? It's going to be at the point um, of insertion of the bicep muscle. The bicep muscle inserts right about there. Okay, so that is where really where the effort is being placed. And um, the muscle is shortening and it is moving, you know, in an upward direction. Um, but the effort itself is going to be on um on that, just like if you had uh, tweezers, your load is going to be on the end. Here's your fulcrum, here's your effort, and here's your load. So almost all skeletal muscles are this way. Um, the elbow joint works like that, the shoulder joint, the knee joint, the hip joint. Um, almost all of them work like uh, third class levers and they're going to sacrifice um, mechanical advantage for speed okay so um, to summarize again the first class lever just so it'll all be on one page first class lever is going to be like lifting your head off like lifting your head off your chest And there were two examples given. There was a seesaw and um, a, I can't remember the other one. There was the guy that was lifting the rock. Um, there was that one. But anyway, a first class lever, you're going to have the load Let's see if you're lifting your head, the load, the fulcrum, and the effort. And depending on the length of the fulcrum and the effort will be, if it's long, then you will have mechanical advantage. So long means power. And opposite, if it's short, then you will not. You will have speed, but you will not have power. Um, then you had the second class lever, which is definitely always mechanical advantage. Um, second class lever, is going to be, um, what did we say, standing on your tiptoes. So the, um, fulcrum is your, your, where your toe, um, where your toe, uh, toes connect with your foot. <laughs> so, uh, where your, basically your phalanges connect with your metatarsals. So that's going to be your fulcrum and then your, um, let me go back and look at it. Just like in a wheelbarrow, then your load will be in the middle and your effort, because the effort is the gastric anemias, um, your effort will be on the end. So, so that we'll have it all together, your fulcrum, your load and your effort and that's always a power lever system and then you can have first is um, a power lever system if it's like this 
but it is a um, speed lever system if the distance between e the fulcrum and the effort is short. So that's something to just kind of go back over. Um, just remember that most skeletal muscles of the body are third class levers, okay? Um, all right, so there are 600 muscles to learn and there are tables that have the following information. Um, a description of the muscle, of course, the name of the muscle, a description, the origin and the insertion. And usually there is a joint between the origin and the insertion, um, just like in any third class lever. I didn't write that one out, but um, the third class lever system is the LEF. LEF. So there is um, normally a joint between the origin and the in insertion in a third class lever. And actions are the movement that can be abduction, adduction, flexion, extension. Uh, rotation, innervation would be the major nerve that supplies the muscle. So these are things, uh, and, and make sure you pay attention here, tips for learning your muscles is make sure you understand the muscle's name and where it came from. Um, make sure you know where the muscle is located on the body. Make sure you know, know where it is attached and um, its actions that it performs. And if you can, feel the muscle for yourself. And you can definitely feel like, for example, the gastrocnemius. Now, this is an anterior view of the human body, and I'm gonna go over the muscles very, very fast just so you can hear them spoken. Um, the epicranius is this muscle on, um, on the frontal bone the frontal belly of the epicranius. And then when you go to the posterior side, the occipital belly of the epicranius. Um, in other books, I've seen it called the occipitofrontalis. The whole muscle is the occipitofrontalis and it's connected by this um, sheet of, uh, called an aponeurosis that connects the frontal muscle and the occipital muscle. But anyway, it's called the epicranius in this book, and that's fine. The orbicularis oculi is uh, the muscle, the circular muscle around the eye. The zygomaticus is your cheekbone. Orbicularis oris is um, uh, your mouth. The masseter is the thick muscle in your, underneath the zygomaticus that, that helps you with chewing. And the temporalis is near the temporal bone. Okay, neck muscles, the platysma is this long, this flat, wide muscle that covers over the deeper muscles. Um, the sternocleidomastoid is the one that is connected to the um, mastoid process. And the sternum and the clavicle. Um, there are some hyoid muscles that are related to the hyoid bone because the hyoid bone is suspended in the neck region. So there are muscles above it and below it um, that I would just concentrate on those whenever you get, you know, uh, get to that section. But one is listed here called the sternohyoid. Um, the trapezius is... Um, your traps, you know, uh, whenever you do shoulder shrugs, you're not working your deltoid, you're working your trapezius muscles. Um, the trapezius goes down the back, like, um, kind of like a, this part right here. Okay. Um, and then there's the deltoid, which is triangular shaped. The trapezius is like a trapezoid, so that's named for its shape. The pectoralis major is here. The pectoralis minor is underneath it. 
All right. Um, the serratus anterior are going to be all of these muscles. They're kind of serrated, like a serrated knife. The intercostals are going to be between the ribs, so here and here and here. Um, the triceps are on the back of the arm, but you can see them from the front here and here. And the biceps, brachii, are there. And the brachialis is a muscle that um, that kind of, you can see it here and you can see it um over here as well, but it kind of assists the biceps brachii, what do you call it, synergist. All right, the um, pronator teres, the brachioradialis, the brachioradialis is the big muscle of the forearm, the, the, bulkier, the bulkier muscle. And the um, palmaris longus is the one that is connected here to um, your palm, the palm of your hand. The uh, flexor carpi radialis is going to be the one that is connected to the radius side. Um, there are more extensors and flexors in the forearm, but um, these are just the major ones. The rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, and vastus medialis all make up, and uh, vastus intermedius all make up the quadriceps. So make sure you know that these are the, this is, group is called the quadriceps. The fibularis longus goes, um, follows down the lateral side where the fibula is. The extensor digitorum longus is, um, kind of in between the fibularis longus is kind of behind the tibialis anterior. Um, and it's the one that I told you was pinnate because there's five digits and um, it connects to all five digits by a tendon. So it causes extension. That means when you stand straight, it causes extension of your um, knee joint. Um, if you bend your knee, that's going to be flexion. And then this is your gastrocnemius or calf muscle, and kind of underneath it, closer to the tibia, is the soleus. And then, of course, the tibialis anterior is connected to the tibia, okay? Um, then you've got some muscles on the back as well. Um, the splenius capitis is a posterior neck muscle. It's gonna be the one that lifts your head up off your chest. The splenius cervicis, um, we named the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid already. The levator scapulae is, an, um, is a deep muscle that helps elevate your scapula. Rhomboid major and rhomboid minor. Um, the triceps brachii is here. The brachialis you can see. Um, again, is a synergist with the, the biceps brachii. The deltoid or the shoulder muscle extends around to your posterior side as well. You can see the teres major. You can see the latissimus dorsi. Um, and the um, on the other side is the pectoralis. So the latissimus dorsi and the pectoralis major are going to be um, antagonists to each other. Latissimus dorsi will cause extension. Pectoralis major will cause flexion of your, of your arm, of your entire arm. So you move your arm forward to the front um, like you're pointing towards something, pointing straight ahead. That's going to be flexion. So that will be your pectoralis muscles. And then if you move your arm back um, straight beside your, straight down at your sides or even back behind you uh, to, the, to the posterior area, that's going to be the latissimus dorsi. That will be called extension. Um, and you've got some flexors and extensors again. In the forearm, you have the hamstrings, which are, consist of the biceps femoris, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. 